drive on the wrong side of the road, I really shouldn't have to tell you what the outcome may be. We drive our cars in excess of the speed limit. You're going to get busted. Hello, I'm Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand. And after the break, join me as I discuss what happens when we want to do our own thing. Let me start with this admission. I've collected more speeding infringement notices over the years which have made a significant dent in my bank account. Another admission is I'm not a psycho. Oh, hang on, that was meant to be a psychologist. So the following is not based on any medical background, just common sense. But during a somewhat heated exchange of words with a tra traffic safety manager on the roadside, he told me, in his words, you need to get rid of your godlike attitude. Now at that point the debate ended about his traffic management of the roadside, but his works grated all day long. What was it? What was it that made him think that I had a godlike attitude? Well, I reflected on the day, I admit, I was wrong driving through a stop pedal, which to this day I still say wasn't there, and maybe he just didn't like someone who had a clue about traffic management challenging him. But I noted the management of the site was different next day, which I took as I was right. But here's the thing, we all do dumb things, we're not perfect, we hold on to that excuse because we're not. If we were, we wouldn't need stop, go, give way, wrong way or speed limit signs. There would be no need to have the police or politicians to make laws, if we were perfect, but we're not. But even perfect people need rules. Go back to the Garden of Eden. There we have Adam and Eve, two perfect people, the perfect couple, made in God's image, both male and female. But they had rules. One of them was deceived, the other coerced into breaking one of them. All I can say about that is I hope that fruit was out of this world, Eve, because you cost us perfection. But given the amount of protests, societal unease and constant rebellion, I'm guessing the majority of today's people aren't keen on rules. This is where I personally struggle. I like rules, but I believe rules, despite my earlier admission, rules must be put in place for the right reason and to be adhered to. If rules are in place and you're going to be punished, maybe this is where my godlike attitude comes to the fore, then the circumstances must be right to be able to enforce them. For example, if you go through a bad traffic management setup where the stop go man was sitting on the side of the road playing on his phone or maybe the speed limit sign just wasn't there or maybe or just maybe you get the picture now god has given us laws not just 10 but read the book of deuteronomy and you'll probably qualify for the bar exam to become a lawyer but god has asked us to do certain things and things we shouldn't think 10 commandments now throughout the bible God has instructed many to do things, and when we have examples of headstrong servants like Jonah, who was given a task, then Nick minute, his world started to stink. Funny, I always think of Jonah when I go past the seafood counter on a bad day at the supermarket. You know, we all need to have a godlike mindset to first recognise and call out injustice when we see it. But can I give you some personal reflection on that? Choose your battles. Not everyone is into God, and they just don't give a toss as to what he wants. But, you know, sometimes we might just have to suck it up and accept things are put in place to protect us. Now, can I say, road rules are obvious, but so is attitude, and as I've said, some of us more than others are slow learners. There are times, though, we think we know better. For example, those who smoke cigarettes. All the warnings are on the packets. I still smoke them, excessive alcohol, drugs, sexual behaviour, deviancies and lifestyle choices. Yep, who does God think he is to tell us what we can and what we can't do? Because they don't believe or want to believe the man in the sky, the invisible one or the so-called author of the fairy tales in the Bible, they've no responsibility and yet sometimes, you know, we don't see a cop or a speed camera but we still have to pay the fine, don't we? Indulge me for a moment and let me leave you with a command from God, about a job he wanted done by the first king of Israel, King Saul, and his response from 1 Samuel 15 too. This is what the Lord God Almighty says, I'll punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up out from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put them to death, men and women, children and infants, cattle, sheep, camels and donkeys. Now admittedly, 
it's not a memo I would have wanted to receive and thankfully we're not put in a position where we're asked to do things like this. But for Saul, who was a warrior king, couldn't be any plainer. And sure there were none left, no survivors. Zip, annihilate, destroy everything, including their livestock, everything. Leave nothing alive, kill them all. Now, before the hand ringers amongst you go all woke on me and note, God had shown some mercy to the Amalekites for 400 years to see if there was any change of heart, even if remorse was going to overcome the nation. It didn't. When Paul attacked the Amalekites, did he fulfill God's will? So we pick up the story after the battle. In 1 Samuel verse 8 we read, Instead of annihilation, he took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. And all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and his army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and the lambs, everything that was good. These they were willing, unwilling to destroy completely. But everything that they, they despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Now this reminds me when a parent wants a teenager's bedroom cleaned up. Mum issues the instructions but later finds it's been a teenager tidy and not a mother's tidy. You get the picture. When God and your mother calls you to do something, sometimes, as we learn from this account, no matter how hard, how distasteful, we better do it. We may find it hard to quit smoking. We might find it hard to cut back on the alcohol. And we might find it hard when God asks us, for example, to reprimand someone else. We must take on this godlike attitude to succeed. We cannot be fearful of man. Ignoring the commands of God brings consequences, as we see in Second Samuel chapter 1, 1 to 10. After the death of Saul, David returned from striking down the Amalekites and stayed in Ziklag two days. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground and to pay him honour. David asked, where have you come from? He answered, I've escaped from the Israelite camp. David again asked, what happened? Tell me. The man replied, the men fled from the battle. Many of them fell and died, and Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. Then David said to the young man who brought him the report, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? The young man replied, Well, I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning, other versions will say impaled, on his spear with the chariots and their drivers in hot pursuit. When he turned around and saw me, he called out to me and he said, What can I do? He asked me, Who are you? An Amalekite, I answered. Then he said to me, stand here by me and kill me. I'm in the throes of death, but I'm still alive. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I knew that after he had fallen, he couldn't survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm and had brought them here to my Lord. Now, remember what God had commanded, what Saul should have done to the Amalekites? A side note, David had this young man executed, not because he brought bad news, but because he was an Amalekite, and none were to be spared. But think about what it is that God is commanding you to do today. Should we continue to be in fear of man rather than fearing God and do our own thing? We need to take on this godlike attitude when we see and experience evil. Last thought. Saul was left impaled on a spear because he was involved in yet another battle with the Amalekites that he should have finished a long time ago. But because Saul chose to ignore God's commands, by not ridding the world of the Amalekites when ordered, Saul put his nation in jeopardy. Later in the Bible, you can read about the Amalekite Haman and the story of Esther. He wanted to eliminate all the people of Jewish descent. If we were honest though with ourselves, when we have a mind to do something, we never really think about the impact on others. We're all guilty of ignoring God's commands. We think we know better. Is there some irony? Saul, close to his death, asked an Amalekite to finish him off. Whatever it is we are reluctant to do to do which God commands us, as Saul found out, what he didn't do became the cause of his death. So what is it that your friends are telling you? Take some time out and listen to what it is that God wants from you. Ignore it at your own peril. Like Saul found out, it may be just the final thing, which will be your death blow.